All right, there we go. <laughs> Thanks everyone for your patience again. I want to introduce myself. My name is Joanna Nelson, and I'm with the New Mexico Economic Development Department. And today you've tuned in for a webinar that we're hosting along with our partners to give an update on the new version of the Paycheck Protection Program from the Small Business Administration. So this will be very informative, and I do want to let you know that um, if you have to jump off or you're not able to watch the whole thing, we will publish the live recording on our YouTube channel, and we also will send out this presentation after the webinar concludes. We did get your questions that you submitted when you registered, so we'll do our best to address those. And then as well, we'd like to encourage you to submit your questions as we go along and as they come up in the questions box. You should see that in a little gray horizontal box on the right side of your screen. Before we get started, I did want to take the opportunity to share a little bit of information about EDD and what we do. Our cabinet secretary is Alicia J. Keyes, and our deputy cabinet secretary is John Clark. And as you can see, our department houses several divisions. We do have a number of financial assistance programs targeted to small businesses. So want to make sure that everyone is aware of these programs as you move forward in the year. This slide is highlighting our collateral assistance program. We've partnered with the SBA on a number of, of projects using this program. It allows us to support businesses that have a shortfall in collateral. And on the next slide, you can see a number of our financial programs as well as some of the specific offices that are housed within our department. So again, we'll be sending out these slides and you can follow up and ask us any questions in regard to these initiatives. We have a number of regional reps located throughout the state. And as you can see, this slide shows their contact information. If you have not met with them or contacted them, I want to invite you to do so. They are a fantastic resource and kind of like our, our front lines and entrance into the department and, and really the network that is located within your region in the state. They're very helpful and able to assist you with many of your questions. Finally, I'd like to highlight how you can stay up to date with the Economic Development Department. I did put a link to our newsletter here where it says sign up for ADD News. This is a weekly resource uh, email that we're putting out every Friday. And what we do is we call national opportunities, state opportunities that are directly they're directly linked to COVID-19 relief. As well, we're putting opportunities for businesses and nonprofits and community projects on there. We're also highlighting relevant news and relevant events and webinars. So if you don't get those, go ahead and sign up and you'll stay up to date with, with what's going on and get updates on financial opportunities. Here's our website, goinm.biz. And then here's our YouTube channel. You can find all of our previous webinars that we've been doing for the past four years now here and, and really get a, uh, a good library and a good uh, slice of information about a lot of different programs. I wanted to point out this top link is a, a webinar that is in, in pro progress right now, but I did want to highlight it. We're still putting this together. We're working with the Department of Cultural Affairs along with the SBDC and some other key partners, SBA, to uh, hopefully have a webinar to go over the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program. So I think this might be on the 26th, but when you do get this link, you can go ahead and sign up for this, and then you'll be apprised of any upcoming changes and confirmations on dates. So I wanted to, in there, 
and go ahead and introduce our great partner, Daniel Schlegel, who is the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Advisor for the Governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham. Dan? Thank you, Joanna. And I just wanted to take a moment to welcome you all on behalf of the Governor's Office. Uh, again, I'm the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Advisor to the Governor, and really pleased to have you here today and our partners at the SBDC and SBA who are doing great work to get the word out on the PPP. Our goal is to really uh, give New Mexico businesses every competitive advantage and information needed to get as much of that hundreds of millions of dollars into your businesses in this forgivable loan. Um, as a side note, I just wanted to mention that the vaccine is rolling out, which is really good news for reopening in New Mexico. And just the link down at the bottom there, uh, cbvaccine.nmhealth.org will allow you to pre-register for the vaccine. So I really encourage you and your employees to take advantage of that. You'll be notified when uh, the phase is up to you, to you based on your age and medical history and et cetera. So we want to roll that out as quickly as possible. And this registration is, uh, is one key way to do it. Help us reopen as quickly as possible in New Mexico and all work together towards that goal. Um, with that, I'll pass it off to what you're really here for, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program. Joanna, go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks so much, Dan. And Shelly, I'm going to change the control over to you. So you should be able to share your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and try this. Again, thanks for bearing with us. And is, is that your screen, Shelly? Mm -hmm. no, I don't know or who that, that is. That might, that I might be mine. Is there, is there anything on there? Yes, we can see your email. Oh. I think. OK. Hang on. Now we see the clothesline. <laughs> uh, I have to figure out how to move it over. Hang on a moment. Let me get rid of this. And I'll go ahead and introduce you all. That, uh, we are lucky to be joined today by John Garcia, who is the state director for the FBA, and Shelly Brown, who is I think your official title, Shelly, is a Commercial Lender Specialist. Is that the right, right. title? That's, that's okay. correct. As she's getting that together, Joanna, I, I can start with my comments and then I'll turn it over to Shelly. Would that work for you? Okay, wonderful. Thanks, John. Okay, first let me just uh, say uh, it's, it's a pleasure to join you guys again. We've been doing this since, the, since April, uh, joining each other and informing the public about um, PPP and the EIDL loans. but. Um, I want to particularly thank uh, Secretary Keyes for her outstanding uh, job of outreach and informing the, the public and our small businesses of uh, and updating everybody on what's going on in the small business community. Dan Slagle, the governor's office, been a real supporter. Uh, they're also a great team member of ours. Um, also, again, I want to do a shout out to the SBDCs, the 18 centers under the leadership of Russell Wyrick. He's been doing a great job. He's joined us on all of these uh, webinars informing the public about the Paycheck Protection Program and the relaunch of it right now. So, and I believe he's on the call um, after uh, Shelly. Also have from my office, uh, Ivan Corrales, he's our Deputy District Director. Uh, I believe he's listening in and will uh, answer some of the questions that may come, come up, um, as well as Shelly uh, Brown, our Lender Relations Specialist, uh, who's done a great job working with all our bankers, micro lenders, and third-party lenders, informing them about SBA products, but more importantly about the Paycheck Protection Program update. Um, the SBA across the country, there's over 66 uh, SBA district offices, and like us today, uh, they're all doing similar webinars across the country, informing the small business community. Uh, they're teaming with their economic development office in each of their states and other entities uh, to provide uh, up-to-date information regarding this uh, Paycheck Protection Program which is an economic saver for many of our small businesses uh, that have been able to take advantage of it. Uh, that being said, Joanna, is that just a, a refresh for everybody? You know, back uh, April the 3rd, April the 4th, um, through April the 15th, and then again in May through August the 8th, we, we've initiated and implemented two PPP 
PPP programs. Um, this or that round of PPP programs that started in early April ended August the 8th. Uh, that was very historic uh, for the SBA and I think for Department of Treasury and teaming with many of our bankers across the country. Um, you know, initially um, we had about 1,700 bankers uh, prior to COVID. Uh, when we went into the PPP program, uh, we have over 5,000 uh, lenders that are now participating in the lending program. And in New Mexico, uh, we had over 600 uh, bankers and lenders and others uh, lending institutions participate with us. And um, if you recall, uh, early on in the first phase, um, many of the larger banks um, um, got to the pot of money that was put aside. Uh, they maxed out. And by the time it came to New Mexico, based on the time zones, uh, many of our large banks were already capped out, which left a lot of small businesses waiting in the wings trying to get their funds. Uh, fortunately, a lot of our um, uh, minority uh, or bankers or lenders and community bankers stepped up, uh, but they were left with a pile of, of hundreds, thousands of applications on their desk uh, waiting for new funding. So when the second funding came out um, during the month of May and it ended August 8th, um, there was $50 billion was set aside specifically for the um, uh, community banks, and they were able to process many of these uh, uh, claims and our applications. Um, nationally, uh, uh, the PPP and the first one and PP2 uh, helped about 5.2 million small businesses across the country. That's a lot of small businesses. Um, and keeping about 51 million American workers employed. Um, uh, and the amount of money that was put out in loans was uh, $525 billion of approved loans. For New Mexico, we approved uh, 22,000 uh, small business uh, loans uh, for a total of about $2.2 billion. And all that was done in a matter of four or five months. So uh, that it was historic, very historic. And a lot of work went into it. It wasn't perfect. And um, we kept asking everyone to stay patient. And now with this third, PPP cycle, uh, we're asking the same thing, stay patient, because it went into effect, as we know, it was signed into law at the end of December, uh, but it went into effect on Monday. Uh, so now this new PPP-3, it authorizes um, uh, $284 billion that's gonna be available for businesses. Uh, it'll end on March the 31st. So between Monday uh, through, March the 31st, this PPP round is, will be active. Um, and this is demonstrated this round that there is a greater focus now on providing funding for the eligible applications or applicants. Uh, those who did not receive the PPP loan before August the 8th of 2020, uh, that is called the first draw. And it began on Monday, January the 11th. And that was um, specifically authorized to the CFIs. Uh, in the MDIs and the CDCs and the micro lenders. And Shelly in her presentation will get into more of that. Um, and these lenders, these were the, 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 the smallest of the small lenders. And what the SBA did and Treasury is give them a shot at the $284 billion available first, because many of them are located in rural areas, um, economic depressed areas, um, and it allows the mom and pa shops, the smaller businesses that maybe not might not go after a larger loan, but it allows them the opportunity to get first in line on that. That's why this is a game changer. Uh, and these types of lenders, they made up about 10% of all the PPP uh, lenders during 2020. So you had about 90% that were the, the, the bigger lenders and these small lenders were competing. So uh, they reversed the process, said, uh, we're gonna open the windows first, for the uh, CFIs and, and the CDCs and the micro lenders, and that's what this was about. But then on, um, uh, uh, on Wednesday, January 13th, the second draw began, and uh, that allowed small businesses with uh, 300 employees or less that previously uh, received the first draw of a PPP loan and uh, will use it uh, or have used the full amount only for authorized uses, and then they can they have to demonstrate uh, at least at 25% a reduction in their gross receipts between any uh, comparable quarter. It could be first quarter, second quarter, third or fourth quarter, 
in 2019 and 2020. They demonstrate that, uh, they qualify in that second draw. And then today, uh, January 15th, it's important to note that today the PPP loan, loan portals have opened up uh, to eligible uh, smaller lenders, uh, small uh, lending institutions that have at least a billion dollars or less in assets. Um, and so, you know, like Wells Fargo, of course, you know, they're in the 10, 10 to 20 billion dollars of assets. So this allows the smaller uh, lenders um, access and in, in to start processing loans. And then, um, and there are, they will be able to submit the first and second draw PPP applications beginning today. Then on Tuesday, January the 19th, these are just dates that are important to remember, the loan portal will open for all the lenders at that time. Um, this morning I was on a call with our administrator, Jovita Carranza, and she was saying that um, it seems to be working very smoothly with a lot of the bankers. A lot of people are already applying and they're already beginning to process a lot of these claims. So we know it's, it's working. Um, and so that's really important. Some of the key aspects, and, and again, Shelly will get into more of them, I just want to kind of highlight is that uh, the PPP borrow on on this PPP these loans uh, uh, they covered will be they'll cover a period of um, any length between eight weeks to 24 weeks. That's a big change. The loan uh, also another change is those these loans cover additional expenses, including um, operational uh, costs, expenditures, property damage costs, supplier costs. Uh, and worker protection expenditures. That wasn't in the last PPPs. Um, and then what's also important to note is that under the Venue Act, uh, the Live Venue Act, is that uh, they've established a grant of $15 billion uh, to support shuttered uh, live type of venues and theaters and museums, even, even the zoos, like the Albuquerque Zoo will qualify. Uh, and, and many of these we know have experienced a tremendous, a significant loss of revenue. Uh, so this gives them an opportunity now to, to take a bite of this, this next funding. Um, and as also the important thing, it's going to provide enhancement of uh, the SBA uh, for verification, uh, requiring an increase of transparency on the, uh, you know, on the plans to ensure that the funds are going directly to eligible entities. So that's, I think, what's really important. But uh, in closing, and I'll turn it over to Shelley, is that, um, with this new funding, uh, Joanna, there's now an expanded eligibility also for 501c6 uh, as before, they didn't qualify, now they do. Um, and as well as uh, housing co-ops, that's very new. Uh, marketing organizations and there'll be some other types of small businesses that qualify. So we know that this uh, PPP funding, it's very unique, it's different and it, it could be a game changer as we at the New Mexico SB office uh, start looking forward to this new stimulus impacting our New Mexico economy and hoping, hopefully uh, help strengthen it. Uh, so I'm encouraging everyone uh, to, if you can write this down, this is our office number, you can call us. Uh, my staff is all virtually working right now um, and we've adapted to that as, as you all have. Uh, and I think the big word for everything is, is adaptability. We're all adapting. But I'm encouraging all of you to call us at 505-248-8225. Uh, um, or visit our website at sba.gov slash New Mexico. The important thing I want everyone also to know about the SBA office and my staff is that we, we focus with our partners, the SBDC, SCORE, uh, WES, or managed our women business centers, um, um, the VBOC Veteran Business Outreach Center, we target and focus on uh, providing adequate, up-to-date technical counseling and partnership with our partners. Uh, also, I think it's important that we, we can advise our clients on access to capital. That's one of the big buzzwords. And then uh, the third one is uh, the contracting opportunities. There's a lot of contract money available, and we can help guide you that uh, through that. So again, uh, call us at... Um, 505-248-8225, or visit our website, sba.gov slash New Mexico. Um, with that, Joanna, I'd like to turn it over to Shelly, and she can get into more details with the Paytech, uh, Paycheck Protection Program relaunch. Uh, she's got a very good presentation, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so let me turn it over to Shelly Brown, our lender relations specialist, 
um, and, um, and at the end, we'll be glad to answer any kind of questions that uh, may come up. Uh, Shelly, you want to take it from here? All right, thank you, John. Boy, you covered a lot of information that I'll be covering, so you must have had a lot of coffee this morning. Um, <laughs> We're, we're getting so, used to this now, yeah. Right, right. so welcome everybody, and um, thank you, Joanna, for having us uh, speak and, and being such a great partner to us. Today, we're going to go over the payment protection program, the relaunch of the phase two, uh, and then some uh, information about that. Hey, Shelly, I was just yes. going to interrupt real quick. I think on your screen, you've got to go up where it says display settings and do hide presenter view. We can see the, the presenter side. Uh, We're up, at the, up to the top to the did. left. Under sharing? No, over, over to the left next to taskbar. Next one over. Here? The other way. Here? There. Yep, and that do, one? yeah, that one. This one? Uh -huh. oh. Yep. All right, perfect. We can see it. Great. Okay. Thanks. Sorry okay. to interrupt. Um, I'm, I'm getting really good at Zoom. We use uh, Microsoft Teams, which I don't understand at all. So um, Zoom is, seems to be the best. This one's pretty new to me. Um, so this today we're this gonna... one is, we're, yeah, we use GoToWebinar. It's kind of old school, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, thank um, you. So today we're going to go over um, where we are as far as the, the, pro the progress of what SBA is doing and, and how far along we've come. Um, the first draw PVP uh, information, the second draw, the forgiveness updates, and, and then what to do. I will, I will tell you that lenders are actively taking applications, inputting applications, um, especially the community banks. I've been getting phone calls from them today and, and emails um, on how to maneuver that um, uh, the portal. So Congress intended this round of PPP to increase access to the COVID relief funding for the hardest hit small businesses and those of the underserved segments, including women, minorities, and veterans. In response, the SBA is initially opening the PPP application to submissions from community financial institutions, which serve the underserved community. Um, levering its lender match platform so borrowers can find those and other participating lenders. And then continuing to provide training, materials, and assistance via um, our field office and our resource partners, which is um, SCORE and WEST and the um, SBDC. They've been uh, teaming with us the last couple of days on doing uh, presentations. But I do want to let me jump back to the lender match. If you go on to um, sba.gov slash lender match, you can, you can go in there, fill out some information, and a referral will be submitted to one of the lenders that signed up to receive those referrals from SBA. So find a lender that's doing that kind of loan in your area. Um, so if you haven't done that or you don't have a, a lender, that's a good resource to go to. So as John mentioned, we opened this up in January 11th. The PPP opened for the first job, but those were for community financial institutions and um, minority and, and micro lenders. We do have two micro lenders in New Mexico, but those two lenders are not participating in the PPP loan. They still are though actively accepting applications for their regular loans and micro loans. Um, they're just not doing the PPP loans. So the, the two on the, the CFIs, community financial institutions, is uh, Dream Springs, which is formerly Axion, and uh, Lift Fund, which is located in uh, Texas. Um, January 13th, the PPP opened up for the second draw loans for all the CFIs, which are the ones that I had just mentioned. And then today, January 15th, PPP opened for the first and second draw applications to lending institutions with $1 million or less in assets. And those are generally the community banks. Um, they have through the weekend and through January to input their PPP loans, and they're actively inputting those as we speak. Then on January 19th, as John mentioned, um, it will be open to all participating lenders. Uh, credit unions are participating in this. You may wanna double check with your credit union if they're going to be participating in the second series. Credit unions, however, generally will not um, 
make a PPP loan if you are not a member of their credit union. So um, if you're interested in doing business with the credit union, check with them and what their policies are. And then March 31st, all PPP applications must be submitted, um, unless of course that's extended down the road, but um, if they do, who knows, uh, other changes could take place. So what is the first draw PPP? Um, that is for eligible applicants who did not receive the PPP loan prior to August 9th, 2020. So last year, and um, this would be included in some of those businesses that are now eligible. Uh, last time they were not eligible, they can apply for the PPP first draw loan. Um, if you've applied for the first draw loan, and uh, you have not applied for forgiveness, you are still eligible to apply for the second. It's just those that who have not received the first job has to go through and apply for the first job PPP. PPP eligibility includes um, additional types, which is the 5013C6 uh, and um, some, other, some other venues. Um, the cover period is expanded, so you have the option to choose either 8 or 24 weeks to use the funds after disbursement. Um, you don't have to wait for the full 24 weeks to apply for forgiveness. If you've used those funds, let's say, in 10 weeks, you don't have to wait till the 24-week period is up to apply for forgiveness as long as the lender is accepting forgiveness packages. Um, certain, certain borrowers may request an increase in their original PPP loan amount. So because we've made some changes on it, for instance, um, those with the NASIC code of 72, they are now eligible for 3.5%. And last time it was 2.5, so they may um, be able to apply for an increase. That one you will have to give it back to your original lender for your PPP loan and uh, speak to them about increasing it. And then again, you must apply on or before March 31st or until congressional appropriations expire. The first draw loan, uh, PPP loan eligibility, um, must comply with the size, size standards. So the first draw was 500 employees, and that still stays in place on this um, first draw. But the newly eligible are housing cooperatives, uh, destination and marketing organizations, certain 501c uh, C6 organizations, such as Chambers of Commerce, and uh, eligible new organizations. Still eligible are business entities, partnerships, corporations, LLCs, sole proprietors, independent contractors, self employed individuals, 5013C, uh, 50C19, and then tribal businesses. I do want to point out, which there was a lot of confusion in the last round, that if you're a sole proprietor and you hire contractors, um, uh, to to contract some work out, you cannot cannot include those um, contractors as your payroll. Those independent contractors are considered independent contractors, and therefore they would have to apply. So you cannot include them as your payroll. They they have to apply themselves. There was a lot of confusion on that last time, and there's still confusion when borrowers are submitting forgiveness, they're um, submitting 1099s on those that they have paid and it's, they're not eligible. So what is the second draw? The second draw is for borrowers that previously received a PPP loan. So if you've already received a PPP one, you've not asked for forgiveness, that's fine. If you use the funds or intended to use all the funds, then you are eligible for the second loan. You do not have to go back to the lender that originally did your first loan. You can apply with any lender that is accepting applications. With that being said, um, it has been lowered to 300 employees or less, and you've suffered a 25% reduction in gross receipts. So for most borrowers, the maximum loan amount of the second draw is 2.5 average monthly, 29 or 2020 payroll costs up to $2 million. And then borrowers in the accommodations and food services, which is a, which holds a NASIC code of 72, the maximum loan amount for the second draw PPP is 3.5, the average monthly amount. If you're if you're self-employed, a sole proprietor, you would use line 31. 31, you divide that by 12 and multiply that by 2.5 or 3.5 if it um, it applies. 
Um, your second draw loan applications must be submitted on our new form, which lenders generally are taking all of those electronically. So check with your lender. Always go to your lender's website first because of the sheer volume that, they're, uh, that they have. They're doing everything electronically. But on phase two, it's form 2483 SD. SD is for second draw PPP loan. The um, magic number on all these loans, first draw and second draw, is 60% used for payroll. So as long as you show that you've used 60% for payroll or more, and then 40% or less for um, uh, qualified expenses, when you apply for forgiveness, you have that information, um, your loan could be forgiven at 100%. So that's the magic number, 60%. Second draw eligibility must have previously received the first draw. So again, if you didn't, you apply for the first draw first. You cannot apply for a first and second draw at the same time because your funds have to be depleted on your first uh, PPP loan before you can apply for the second. And you are certifying on the second one that you have used the, the funds properly on the first. Um, so again, I just mentioned this, but has used or will use their first draw PPP only for eligible expenses, again, 60% for payroll or more, um, and 40% or less for um, uh, approved costs. Um, you have no more than 300 employees, and you can demonstrate a 25% reduction in growth rate between uh, comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. So if you pull your 2020 quarter three, and you compare those with 2019 quarter three, and there is a 25% reduction in gross receipts, you would be eligible. So you choose which quarter you're going to be using. The PPP forgiveness, uh, this last go around, we did have a simplified form of loans that are $50,000 or less. Um, we are coming out with a simplified form for $150,000 or less. There is no automatic forgiveness. There's um, a lot of talk out there, and then there's misinformation on the on the internet that it's automatically forgiven. There, there will not be. You have to fill out the form, submit it to the lender, and you're certifying that all your information is true and correct, similar to when you file your tax returns, how you're certifying them and submitting them electronically. So that that's pretty much what you're doing. You're certifying that everything was um, done correctly. That form is not available yet. So therefore, lenders may not be accepting forgiveness applications. But again, you'd want to check with your lender that you received your one, your first uh, PPP loan with. And then two, of course, they're not accepting forgiveness for the second because they're just now taking applications. Um, in the last go round, the, the, if you apply for an idle loan and you receive the idle advance and or grant, um, we were deducting that idle advance from your PPP forgiveness and sending the difference to the lender, leaving you with a balance due for that advance. Um, that has been retracted and we're working with um, lenders to um, submit the differences. So if you've had an advance, that is no longer going to be deducted from the PPP. So that's new. Um, and so now, so you may have, if you ask for forgiveness, you may have received something from the from the lender that said you now owe $2,000, you need to start making the payments by whatever date. So that has been changed and we'll be sending the lender the difference in the funds. If you paid the loan off, the lender more than likely will um, rebate you. Uh, if you've been making payments, more than likely the lender will pay off that PPP loan and then send the difference to you. Um, forgiven PPP loans are not taxable income and the expenses with the PPP loans are uh, now tax deductible. So IRS came out last year with a notice that said, if you use PPP and you got forgiven for that loan, then you cannot deduct the expenses that the um, SBA forgave you for because they looked at it as double dipping. So that's been retracted, that no longer applies. So now you can, whatever you've used for your, uh, on your PPP, forgiven you're now able to deduct those on your expenses always consult your tax advisor um, for information on that um, expanded forgivable expenses are permissible for any ppp loan not already forgiven and then coming soon that as i mentioned the simplified form of one hundred and fifty thousand or less 
So what to do and additional resources, um, contact your lender. And again, you don't have to use that same lender. You can use a different lender. Um, if you do not have a lender, you can find one on LenderMatch at sba.gov slash LenderMatch. Um, you can visit um, sba.gov slash PPP for the most up-to-date documents. Um, SBA is the, uh, the source to go to. Um, Treasury is available as well, but um, if it's not posted on SBA, then it really isn't public information um, for us to give. Um, you can also find your local district office at uh, sba.gov slash local dash assistance. And this one is super important to subscribe to the SBA um, newsletter. So anytime there's any updates, which now they've been coming uh, often, almost daily, um, we send out uh, via our Gov delivery system the newsletter and up-to-date information. So if you're not on this, I highly suggest that you do. Go to www.sba.gov slash updates and select to be updated. You will get an email from Gov delivery. Um, with any new updates. Also, if we're going to be conducting any uh, training for the public, we will post that as well. In addition to that, if you're a Twitter person, uh, you can go on to ask at sba.gov. And John had given the information on our uh, website and or actually our, our main line, which is 505-248-8225. That is our main line for the New Mexico District Office. And then we have a main mailbox at New Mexico underscore DO at SBA.gov. You can send an email there as well. Um, so with that, we're at the question portion. And I think, are we going to do questions now? Or are we going to save them to the end? We're going to save them to the end, Shelly, after SBDC. OK, perfect. All, All right. right. Thank you so much, Shelly and John. That yeah, you was bet. great. And, right. and Thank you. Um, if you. Hold on, we'll turn it over to Russell Wyrick, who is the director of the State New Mexico Small Business Development Center. And I'll turn it over to you, Russell. Thank you. All right. Okay. Very good. 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 okay. So I'm hoping everyone can see my screen. Let me click here. Can you see my presentation? Yep. Perfect. Take it away. Excellent. So much. It's such a pleasure to be with all of you today here. We have so many people on this call, and I'm just grateful to be here today. And I want to thank you for being on here. Um, I'm glad I'm going to be able to share with you this 5,593 page consolidated uh, Appropriations Act of 2021. This thing was so long when we were reviewing it, as you're scrolling through it with your mouse, if you bumped your mouse, it would like jump 400 pages. It sinks huge, okay? So uh, again, my name is Russell Weirich. I'm the New Mexico Small Business Development Center a Network Executive State Director. and um, I'm, I'm so glad to be here. I've got many of my lead center staff on this call. I believe Glenn Walters is on here, Adrian Gallegos, Martin Gutierrez. Then I have many of my center directors from across the state that are on here as well. So, um, you know, Glenn may be jumping in as, as we're covering slides and, and discussion. But we know that small business is the backbone of New Mexico, and we know that it's often the, the, these local businesses that are uh, that integral part of the community and have been making a significant, you know, just small businesses have been hit very hard by this COVID-19 pandemic. Some things I want to share with you a little bit about today. I'm going to go really quickly at uh, uh, slides because of coverage. But, you know, I've been doing a lot of searching over this time. And I think a part of this, if you've ever, if you've ever read the book uh, by Dr. Johnson of Who Moved My Cheese, I think it's pretty relevant right now. And I think there's some thinking here of change is inevitable. Change, ha change happens, and we're looking at this thing, and many of us are still sitting back, making decisions in fear. We're, 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 we're trying to make our business decisions because we're afraid of what tomorrow is going to hold. And it, it's time to kind of, you know, we've got to anticipate change. We've got to monitor change. We've got to be able to adapt quickly to that change. Um, and, and to some degree, even begin to, if possible, enjoy that change. And, and as we share of this, I think there's a lot of opportunities right now 
that this act is going to allow you to explore. And so I'm going to pose some ideas to you you may not have considered. This may be the perfect time to expand your business, to buy a new business, to buy a second business, to do things that you hadn't anticipated. And I'm going to share with you why as we go through this, okay? So we're gonna, I'm gonna hit PPP, I'm gonna do it pretty condensed because SBA did such a good job of covering it. We're gonna talk about the IDLE again and the advanced grants. I'm gonna talk to you about the incredible things here with the, the, the taxes and the opportunities most people I think are overlooking. I'm gonna talk to you about some of the SBA loans and the incredible opportunities that you have there right now that probably best time in history to borrow money. We're gonna talk, I'll just briefly hit the shuttered venue operation grant. Uh, then we're gonna talk about some training offerings and things that, that may be able to help you, okay? The New Mexico SBDC, we're a network of centers across the state. We've got 18 centers. There's a, someone covering your county. If you need help, pick up the phone, call them. Uh, we, we're all open for business. We're doing uh, 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 counseling via uh, technology and phone, um, and so we're gonna help you. Um, and we will help you starting a business, growing your business, saving it, getting the financing. We also have our procurement technical assistance centers program. If you want to do government contracting, we're here to help you. We got our international business accelerator in Santa Teresa. So if you haven't considered international trade, now's a good time to do it. We're here to help you. And we've got our technology commercialization accelerator there in Socorro. So your intellectual property, if you've got uh, something you're needing to take to market, we're here to help you. Okay. Um, so let's get started. The PP opening dates were covered very well by the SBA presentation. Um, as you can see, the uh, on the first draw, I've kind of got my slides broken in between the first draw, uh, those with an existing PPP and second draw. So uh, again, from the, the, the criteria here, as you see, 501c6s, nonprofits, those, it was expanded to be able to cover them. It also, if you see, it expanded the covered expenses to include software, cloud computing resources, human resources, accounting needs, as well as property damage due to public disturbances that weren't covered by insurance. So this is this is new stuff that was added in. So if you experience some property damage due to the recent disturbances uh, situation that's been going on, not covered by your insurance, uh, it, it's allowable now as well as some supplier cost and purchase of the personal protective equipment. I've been talking to people like, let's say you need to put in a drive through window. Now's a good time to do it because it, you can cover it under the PPP. Um, there's also some set asides for first time borrowers uh, that with the 10 employees or less. Um, and uh, like we said, the simple, simplified form for the loan forgiveness for 150,000. The other thing that uh, you may even be able to, if you, even if you took advantage of the employee retention tax credit, you're not going to be able to, to deal with the uh, use of PPP as well. And we're going to talk about that. Okay. So uh, as far as recipients, the um, um, it, it, the override, the IRS uh, had barred small businesses from deducting from their tax expenses expenses that were paid with the PPP loans. That's been overridden. So now those expenses that you paid with the PPP loans. Uh, those are covered, so you're good there. Um, and like we said, you can take both the employee retention tax credit and the PPP loan. Um, and I'm going to tell you some exciting things about the employee retention tax credit. I think a lot of people are missing. Okay. Um, let's see. They also lowered the eligibility here um, so that, you know, for the second draw, you have no more than 300 employees and you can demonstrate at least a 25% reduction in your gross revenues between comparable quarters in 2019 and 2020. Now what's important here, you gotta compare the quarters, but you have a little bit of ability because you can pick the quarter. So that, that's kind of helpful and should help you uh, be able to uh, navigate this for the, the, the second draw. Um, they determine that loan size, 2.5% uh, of your average monthly payroll cost up to 2 million. Uh, and then if you're in accommodation food service, they use a 3.5 uh, 3 of the average monthly payroll cost. Okay, so if you spend at least 60% of that PPP on your payroll, then the, that, uh, that uh, PPP second draw can be forgiven. Um, and uh, so just things to keep in mind. Let's talk about IDLE. IDLE's uh, still out there, um, and there's some exciting changes. Well, some good changes to advance depending on where you're located at, and we'll talk about that. So the portal extended to December 31st, 2021. 
The terms on that idle, that's the economic injury disaster loan. This is the disaster office at the SBA. You, you, you apply for this on their website. The terms are 3.75% for businesses and 2.75% for nonprofits. And you can get terms up to 30 years on that, which is incredible. When, when, you, when you break out those payments, you can see it's like uh, being able to spread payments out that long is, is, is pretty nice, especially with low interest rates. You can use that for working capital and normal operating expenses. Now, the original amount for that was two million, and then there the it was capped at one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We're waiting on guidance for that. So that was the the what idle happened happened idle before. So once we get some guidance, uh, the SBA releases. We're hoping that opens back up so so that if that larger amount so those larger amounts are available. Now the idle advance grant. If you remember when Idle first came out, there was this advance grant where it was, it was, they said it was up to 10,000, but the way they calculated that was based on the number of employees that you put on that application. So if you had five employees and you were they were eligible for $5,000 of that advance, forgivable advance. Uh, um, so what they did this time is they targeted it, okay? So the original advance, the one that they did back in the CARES Act, all that money is gone. That advance, that opportunity is over, does not exist anymore. All right. But the, the, the new advance uh, is targeted. And it, there's some very specific rules that apply to be eligible for it. And so you have to, it has to be a business with no more than 300 employees. All right. Here's the big one. You have to be located in low-income communities. Okay, so your business is going to have to be located in an area that is designated as a low-income community. If you're not designated as a low-income community, you cannot take advantage of the, the advance, all right? So this is limited to, to businesses located in those low-income communities. Much of New Mexico qualifies, okay? So you, you, something you're going to need to look, you want to look at. And then you have to experience a 30% reduction in gross receipts during any eight-week eight week period between March 2nd and December 31st, 2021, and relative to a comparable eight-week period immediately preceding March 2nd, 2020, or during 2019, all right? And then if you're a seasonal business concern, uh, such other amount, it's it's determined by the administrator in, in the uh, uh, guidance. So the, the point here is um, the other exciting thing here that, to be aware of is if you do qualify. So if your business is located in one of these, the, the low income areas and you qualify, if you receive that idle grant earlier, you can reapply to get the, the difference between what they gave you and that full 10,000. So the way, again, we won't know in practice till we actually see it, we just know how the act was written. And the way it was written was, let's say you had four employees and you got the $4,000, the way the act is written, is that uh, if you qualify, you live at you your business is sorry is in the low income area, and you reapply, that you should qualify for that difference, and so they should be giving you the ten thousand. I'm sorry, the six thousand, like that six thousand dollars difference from the four thousand they gave you before. So you should be able to get up to the full ten thousand. Um, so even if you got it before, um, and if you didn't get it before, again you'd qualify for the ten. So if you, you want, the, you don't want to check that out. There's not a great website right now. There's a lot of maps out there that you can use to see areas that, are, that would qualify as low income, but I have, we haven't found the tool where we, where that makes it really simple yet, but you could you know, look online, there's lots of tools for it, okay? And those have been extended through December 31st, 2021. Here's a big one, so if you're not, pay attention. Some of you, when you hear the word taxes, you shut down and you don't hear, but you need to listen to this because it's important, all right? You're gonna wanna move on this, and uh, so, so you may have remember you may remember hearing about the employee retention tax credit that was back in the original CARES Act, okay? And there was a credit in there, but it was a smaller credit, and small businesses had to choose between the PPP loan and taking that credit. And and when you did the analysis at that time, the PPP was pretty much a better deal for most businesses. Now you don't have to choose; you can take the PPP and that tax credit. The other important thing to understand is it, it, this is what applies, it applies against what you submit for withholdings for payroll taxes, the, the social security, the stuff that you're sending in for your employees. So this is not the April 15th taxes we're talking about. This is the 
you know, you withhold money from your employee's paycheck from, from their, their payroll taxes and you send that in regularly, that's the money we're talking about, okay? The other important thing to understand is it's a refundable credit. So if your eligible credit exceeds your level of taxes, the IRS will send you a check for the difference. So big, big change here, all right? So for the taxes that you would have paid and what you're eligible for through this credit, the other thing, it's even advanceable. So for the next two quarters, um, if you see here, beginning January 1st, 2021, this, this one expires on June 30th, 2021. It's good for two quarters. It, the credit is for 70% on $10,000 in wages per quarter or a maximum of $14,000 per employee through June. So for some of you, this could lead up to million, you know, over a million dollars uh, from, from you that have a couple hundred employees. Um, uh, so it's a pretty big game changer. Um, so it's about 7,000, that'd be up to 7,000 per quarter. Now, the other thing that you need to understand, this is also, it's up to 5,000 for 2020. So the year that's already passed. So you need to get, if you haven't talked with your accountant on this, you need to get on the phone, you need to talk with them now. You need to start looking at this uh, opportunity. Uh, I, I can't tell you to take it or not to take it, or, or that's not my role. My role is just to put it on your radar. You need to talk to your accountant, uh, you talk to your, your, your tax attorney, have some discussion with them to make a decision for your business, see if you're eligible. But this could mean money in your pocket. Literally, you could have money you had paid in 2020 that you're just waiting for them to send you the check back for, for that, for what you qualify, up to $5,000 per employee. Okay. Now, the eligibility also changed. So the original eligibility, of course, was 50% on the, the, the qualified wages. So um, big change here. So the, the other thing is that the, you have to have experienced a decline of more than 20%. So of course, probably we're going to assume 90% of the small businesses in New Mexico are in that category. So keep an eye on it. The other thing is they raise the limit. It used to be 100 employees. Now it's 500 employees. So um, you can claim that up to 500 employees. And 500 does, if you over 500 doesn't mean you're not, if you have 501 employees, doesn't mean you don't qualify. It means you just can't claim the 501st employee. You can only claim the five, up to the 500. So, um, uh, and you also can get, use that employee retention tax credit and the PPP, all right? So get with your accountant on that. The other thing on the taxes, for some of you that use that White Houses, the White Houses, they allowed you the uh, deferral. That repayment deadline was extended from April 2021 to December 31st, 2021. So it's gonna give you, you got longer repayment period for that. You can also defer your employer share. So before where you could, you know, you could defer your employee side, now you can also defer your employer share of social security taxes through March, 2021 and make those amounts uh, and pay those about amounts back as late as the end of 2020. Um, the work opportunity tax credit, I wanted to put this on everyone's radar. Um, this was renewed. Now you probably remember this tax credit. This was one that's been around for a little while. It, it expired and, and this, this, they did a renewal in this. This was the tax credit. So like if your business hired someone that was on, so, you know, the coming off of social security disability or coming off of like, you know, a TANF, a food stamps, uh, uh, et cetera, was in those categorized groups, then you'd get this tax credit that you could apply for that employee. One of those qualified, one of those qualified groupings within that, that act was long-term unemployment recipients. Now, a long-term unemployment recipient is someone that's been on unemployment for like 27 weeks or more, okay? So, so he, now, now I know some of you getting excited, that, that, but I do want to warn you, this, this only applies to new employees. If you're rehiring somebody, you're not going to be able to do this, but if you're hiring somebody new, you will. Um, uh, likely, but again, talk to your accountant. Um, but you want to evaluate this because it's very, the possibility or the odds that over the next, from next two to three years here, as you're hiring people back and revamping your business up, it, it's, it's very possible uh, the odds are high that you're going to be hiring somebody that's coming off of, uh, of long-term unemployment. So you need to make sure, talk with your accountant, your payroll. There's a form that you can fill out. It's a pre-qualification form. A lot of companies have 100% of, you know, whenever someone uh, is, is filling out their paperwork, starting a new job, they fill that form out. 
it's just standard practice and, and you may want to consider doing that because again you don't want to miss this opportunity remember the earn the uh, employee retention tax credit that's through june this thing is through 2025 so this is something that you, you may be able to benefit from long term here okay but again talk to your accountant and bookkeeper about this don't don't take that tax credit and write on tell the irs that the russell at the svdc said you could take it i didn't say that i said talk to your accountant about it all right so this is the biggest one of the biggest opportunities here i want to talk about sba loans so it enhanced the uh, 7a loan program the guaranteed to 90 percent increased to 90 percent reduced or no fees for the borrowers and the lenders and additionally, it temporarily temporarily increased the S, uh, 7A express loan limit and loan guarantee. It eliminated the fees for the 504 loan program and offered some favorable terms for, for refinancing. It also increased the loan limit for the microloans in order to increase the capacity and make get those loans out to underserved markets. Here's the biggie, okay? It extends the small business debt relief program, which would defer payments of principal and interest on new and existing SBA 7A, 504, and microloan programs. So some of you have existing 7A, some of you have the 504, the microloans, and uh, so again, it, it extended the ability for the, de the deferment of payments. One of the things that they did that was a game changer um, back in CARES Act, and most people missed it, right? Most people just weren't paying attention, and it's been renewed. If you take a new 7A loan, Okay, you take a new loan. Uh, the my, I'm sorry, uh, take a new loan. Uh, SBA guarantee uh, uh, five. The SBA is going to make the principal and interest payments on that for you for the first six months. Okay, now when you start thinking about that, it, it's not a deferment. They're not tacking it onto the back of the loan. They're making those payments. So if you went out and bought a business today, if you went out and bought a business on like a three-year note, okay. The first six months of that business have just been paid for by the SBA. Okay, when you do the math on something that like that, you realize, wow, that's almost like a I just got a 17 percent discount on buying a business. Okay, if you are if if you have been considering or looking at maybe it's now time to diversify your industry to to build some security. Maybe you need to look at other industries to expand into. Maybe you know been thinking about expanding your building interest rates have never been this low okay you can take advantage of this to get in a position so just encouraging everyone think differently um, and think about um, what would you do if you weren't afraid so if you were making decisions if you weren't living in fear right now and you were looking at things from the position of opportunity would you be making different decisions so i want to just encourage everyone it, it, it may be time to shift thinking and start thinking a little bit differently about this instead of when are we gonna get out of this COVID-19 and get back to normal as to, hmm, what is, the, what is the future gonna look like and how can I position myself to take advantage and leverage for, for that future? Okay, so the shuttered, the shuttered Venue Operation Grants, also known as the Save Our Stages Act. The Save Our Stages Act was, was consolidated into this, uh, 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 the uh, funding bill. So it's called the Shutter Venue Operations Grant. You can get up to, it's up to $10 million or 45% of the 2019 gross to earned income, whichever is less, and it's based on significant 2020 revenue losses. Now this is a very, very narrow eligibility, okay? This is for live venue operators or promoters, theatrical producers, live performing arts organizations, uh, operators, museum operators, like motion picture theater operators, uh, maybe like uh, who've experienced at least a 25% reduction in their gross earned income. Okay, if you're like a restaurant and you have a you know a, a little stage that someone comes and plays on the weekend, you're not going to qualify for that. This this don't this is not what that's for. This is for for people who their revenue is generated from these live venues. We are waiting on one more information. The SBA administrator in DC has to produce. You know, we're waiting on some guidelines and some rules to put in place and functionality and application process. So this is not ready to go yet. So you don't ask us questions today on it because we're not, we can't answer them. We don't know, okay? But the, the key point you need to know if this is your business is, is there is a rule in that act that you cannot apply, you can't apply for the new PPP loan 
and get that grant, okay? So that's the only uh, kicker here. So if you are a, you know, a, a theater, a live venue operator, you may wanna wait a week or two to kind of see how this materializes so you can determine is a PVP gonna be better for you or is applying for this grant gonna be better for you? Um, but I'm just giving you what we know now, okay? I have on my notes, I gotta get this change. There was a presentation yesterday. It filled up. Uh, I mean, they, they exceeded capacity. It was a pretty short presentation, but I think there's gonna be, this is gonna be pretty competitive uh, from what we could tell. Okay, really super, super quick. I just wanna give you time for, uh, for, we have some training opportunities coming up. We had one, again, I gotta get my slides updated. We had one to, at 10 o'clock today that just hit, so we'll skip that one. My next one coming up is on January 20th at 2 p.m. You probably wanna write this down. My associate state director, Adrian Gallegos, hit a grand slam. She was able to get us a great a presenter, Neil Bradley. If you don't know Neil Bradley, he's the executive vice president and chief policy officer for the US Chamber of Commerce. One of the best speakers uh, I've seen in the understanding of uh, the PPP, the employee retention tax credit. So uh, he, he's gonna be available, should be able to help you with all those questions, but uh, great opportunity. There's no charge for it at all. You go to nmsbdc.org, our website, nmsbdc.org to register. Let, let people know about it. You know, uh, that's why we're doing these. We just, we wanted to, to bring some expertise in to, to, to help you all out. We also have another one covering the PPP loan, uh, loans and employee retention tax credit that's on January 29th at, at 10 a.m. Again, none of these cost. The cybersecurity, if cybersecurity is not on your radar, you need it to be. Okay, you think COVID's bad? Wait until you lose all of your customer data, all of your accounting work, everything. So you need to be paying attention. Um, we have these cohorts. They're every Tuesday and Thursday, so it's a six-part series. You can join any of those cohorts. Uh, that we've got one starting the 19th, the 21st, the 26th, the 28th. Uh, there's no charge for them, but uh, you might assign someone from your, your business if, if you need to keep it, to attend this, to keep an eye on it. E-commerce, if you're not online selling, if you've been sitting back and you're, not, you're like, hey, what is this thing about getting online? I'm not comfortable. Now's the time to do it. It may be the new normal. We have uh, starting January 20th, every third Wednesday of the month, we're making this offering. It's the e-commerce and alternative selling methods. So it's gonna be talking to you about how do you sell differently? How do you start selling through e-commerce and shifting? Again, no charge. Uh, the other one we've got, it's the basic steps to starting a business. So you've got some people, you may know some individuals who uh, are unemployed um, or, or in a rough spot, and, and now may be the time they need to explore uh, starting a business or buying a business, like I said, uh, and that's going to be offered every other Wednesday, uh, every other Wednesday starting January 22nd. Uh, so I'm wrapping up here. Visit our website. It, it's nmsbdc.org, which stands for New Mexico Small Business Development Centers. Um, go to that website. We've got all, links there with all, all of the information. We've got videos on there and uh, presentations uh, that can help you as you're navigating this. But I want to leave you with this. What do you need to do first? Now is the time you need to create a strategy and you need to move. Okay, If you're talking about PPP, you need to start talking to a lender now. If it's idle or the idle targeted advance grant uh, for that debt relief, then you go to the SBA website. You need to start doing your research. They're still updating that website for the SBA, so don't panic. I believe that advance, the 10,000 advance, officially opens. It's supposed to open on the 17th, so uh, keep an eye on that. So if you apply today, you may want to wait because um, my understanding is that portal or that the, the portal may be open, but the ability to get that advance. Um, is uh, the 17th is when that launches. Uh, the ER, the employee retention tax credit, talk to your accountant. Don't wait until April, you know, you get closer to April. Now's the time to have the conversation. And then, and then the Mexico SBDC is always here. We're ready to help. So with that, I'm gonna turn it back over. Thank you. All right, great. Thank you so much, Russell. That was fantastic. That was a really great overview of some of the changes. And, and you, along with our, our great team at SBA, I think we've got a really good picture. And um, right now we're going to open up the floor for questions. And I'm going to go ahead and um, 
to start reading through some of these, I, I want to encourage all the panelists that you are able to see the questions in that questions box. So if you see one that you want to answer, take it away. Um, I'm going to go through and start with the first one from Julie. And she says, um, if we have questions about qualifying for and accessing some of these SBA loans, should we contact the SBDC first or the local SBA? This is John. Uh, my, my, uh, either one of us uh, can assist you. Uh, Russell and his team, have, are, they're constantly briefed. They're up to speed on a lot of the information necessary and or if you call our office, uh, that I was t gave you the number, 248-8225. Uh, leave a message. Uh, we're all teleworking, and uh, Shelly or Ivan or myself will get back with you on that. But uh, either SBDC or SBA. And this is Russell, and not to put extra work on the SBA district office, but one of the advantages you can get by calling that SBA district office is there are additional resource partners in the state. So by that, we have the Women's Business Center in New Mexico that's called West. We have our SCORE chapters, there's three in the state. And we have our veteran business outreach centers, uh, outreach center here. So when you, when you call the SBA district office and you kind of explain what, what's going on, they can get you routed to the right solution. So for example, if you're a woman owned business, uh, West is an exceptional opportunity for you uh, uh, to get some specific assistance. Um, and so again, hopefully that's helpful. Okay, great, thank you. Do you have to file for PPP loan forgiveness prior to accessing the second round of the PPP? Shelly, are you the line? No, you do not. You don't have to apply for the forgiveness in order to apply for the second round. You just have to have used the funds. You're certifying that you're using the funds or intend to use the funds. Okay, wonderful. If you are a small business and only have one employee yourself, can you apply for the PPP? Yes. You would provide your Schedule C's to the, the lender to calculate the amount um, of a loan. Yeah, and this is Russell, I'm gonna add on to that, even though it wasn't asked. If you're a sole proprietor and you're looking at that employee retention tax credit, you need to talk to an accountant about it because there's some complications there in regards to, uh, because again, you know, when you're self you know, a sole proprietor, you're paying both parts of that employee, that tax. You're paying the employee portion, plus you get the privilege of playing your, the, the employer portion as well. So you get it, it twice. So you'll want to talk to your accountant about that, of how to navigate that to see it uh, on the employee retention tax credit. So, so in theory, you could possibly do the PPP and employee retention tax credit as a sole proprietor, but, but uh, you know, chat with your, you know, talk with your accountant. Hey, uh, Joanna, there's a question in there from April Jouse regarding a shuttered venue grant. Um, I just want to add some information to that, and Russell could probably add more to it. Um, I just got an email this morning from our administrator's office in Washington D.C. that's um, in order to uh, facilitate um, a, a, a more efficient, effective uh, rollout of the, um, um, the shuttered venue operators uh, grant, as we know, it'll have um, uh, quite a bit of money in that, is that uh, they're partnering, uh, or the SBA is gonna partner with what is the National Independent Venue Association, acronym NIVA, uh, to assist with outreach to the many uh, live performance venues um, in New Mexico, as well as across the country. Uh, they're working on a, a strategic alliance memorandum uh, that we've initiated at several here in our own state uh, to support uh, an alignment, uh, let's say, of outreach efforts. Uh, and in New Mexico, there's a gentleman, uh, he was on the call yesterday. Uh, his name is uh, Jason Wiley. He's up in Taos. Um, he, he, he's he got a, a brewery and a, a venue, an entertainment venue up there, but he is listed as the captain for New Mexico, for NEVA, um, and he'll take the lead with the uh, uh, teaming, providing information and working 
with the SBA, and I'm sure there'll be more information coming down the pipe. Um, and so I, I'll send the information over to Russell and to you all because apparently the Aniva will now be a, a assisting us in the outreach regarding the shuttered venue operators program. So there'll probably be more information coming down on that. So I don't know if Russell or Shelly want to add anything to that. No, that's good. We're just um, posting up-to-date information on the website. So yesterday, the shuttered venue was posted yesterday. And any new information that comes out, then we'll update it accordingly. OK, thank you. I have a question here from Angela. And the question she's getting at, I think, came up a lot during the first go around. So I'm going to throw this out to you all. She is a woman-owned small business, originally received the PPP through her bank, which is a, one of the major national banks, one of the, the largest banks in the country, and understands that large banks will not be able to offer these new PPP loans until Tuesday. Should she try to apply now through a different organization or wait until Tuesday and apply through the large bank? And I think she's getting at is is there uh, a a time frame that uh, people are expecting the funds to run out and an immediacy for folks to go to other organizations outside of their their own banks? Well, we don't expect funds to run out. Last time we gave funds back, but um, that's going to be entirely up to her whether she wants to apply at that same bank. I would check their website because. A lot of a lot of lenders were accepting applications. They were just unable to submit them through our system. So check with the lender and see if they're accepting applications. And once they receive them, then they can submit them to us. So right now, the larger banks cannot submit to us, but um, possibly they could be taking applications ahead of time. Now the larger banks, uh, everyone, all the lenders will be able to participate on Tuesday. Uh, so they've 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 left these windows open, starting Monday for the the micro lenders, the CFIs, uh, and they're graduating it. And then on uh, and now the smaller banks, their lenders with the one billion dollars in assets are participating. Then on Tuesday, it's going to open up. So as Shelly said, I really would suggest uh, talk to her banker, uh, see if they're participating, and um, if so, then on Tuesday. She'll be in the front of the line if she starts talking to her banker now. And this is Russell. I, same thing. I think maybe the question. I really, I'd encourage you to look at the your lender, your banker, from a relationship perspective. Yeah. It's not shift mindset from what banker can I go to to more. Um, you know, a smaller if a smaller lender is a good fit for your business, maybe it's time to look. Okay. But, but if you're happy with it, um, you know, so I just encourage you to think of it from, you know, I'd start with your existing lender. If you're happy, start with your existing lender. Great, thank you. And I do wanna put a plug for our CDFI partners that are in the state. We have uh, three really exceptional organizations here and I don't think they've been mentioned, but one of those is DreamSpring and the second one is the Lift Fund. They have representation here as well as Clearing House. And Lift Fund, Clearing House, they're actually headquartered in other states, but they do have reps here in New Mexico, and then Dream Spring is here. And they all three are offering technical assistance and can answer any questions too. And of course, we have representation from a lot of, I don't even know the number, but more CDFIs here in the state as well. Okay, the next question is from Jennifer and she's asking if SBA loan debt relief, for the SBA loan debt relief, do borrowers need to stop or pause their automatic payments slash draft they have set up with their lender? How does that work? Um, I'm sorry, what was that question? She's asking, how does she set up the deferment on her current SBA loan? Does she just stop it, or how does she enroll in that program? Oh, uh, it's it's done automatic. So every month, the lenders report to SBA all the active loans that they have in their portfolio. So they report to us, 
And then SBA will kind of like last time, if, if she didn't have a loan prior to this, we would send the funds to the lender and then the lender would credit the account or the loan. So she doesn't have to do anything on her part. Okay, thank you, Shelly. And I'm just going through these. A lot of them have already been answered. And want to encourage everyone, if you do have questions, go ahead and put those in the questions box. We'll take a few more so we're not going over time. And if you'd like to also, uh, Joanna, when we're done, uh, you can forward those questions to to our office and, and or Russell's office, and we can return some answers back to, to you to get them to the client. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, John. Are franchise owners eligible? Yes. All right, we got that question a, a few times. And then we also had a question about eligibility. Is a co-op eligible? Uh, how are they identified? If they're a 501? Yeah, I think she's saying 501C4. I, I don't believe those are. Okay. And I've seen this question a few times. If a business was denied for a PPP, does that make them ineligible for this round? Well, they, they still could be eligible to apply, but why were they denied? Um, that would be the bigger question. So they, if they were denied, it wouldn't be credit-based because these aren't based on credit. So depending on why they were denied. Maybe they weren't in business because um, they had to be in business prior to February of 2020. Um, I, I, it depends on the reason why they were denied. Okay, thank you. Will businesses on tribal land find any challenges in applying for PPP loan funds? That I, I'm not aware of any challenges that um, any businesses have applied. So. Whoever you um, you bank with it is the best choice. Like Russell said, you have that relationship with, that is the best place to start. This is Russell. Okay. I haven't, in reviewing that and that thought process for the PPP, I haven't identified any specific obstacles uh, with that, that we tip, we see with many loans uh, for businesses that are on tribal land. So I, I'm not, I haven't spotted any right offhand but uh, it is something we're still researching. And just to add to that, uh, the SBA, uh, we we work with, uh, we have teamed with uh, at least 78 tribally owned companies. These are companies that are owned by the tribes. Um, and though we also have a, a, a lot of Native American owned companies that uh, we team with, but um, we'll double check on that to make sure. Okay, thank you. Here's a question from a nonprofit up in Taos that says the PPP online application form requires ownership information, including percentages. How should nonprofits handle this? Um, are they looking at the new form? Let me pull that out. That I don't know, I'll have to research that for you. Okay, all right, great. Thank you, Shelley. And I would open it up. Russell or John, are you seeing any questions that you did not already cover that you wanna take? I was gonna ask, uh, there's one that's uh, Jeanette Weiler's got that maybe Shelley can answer is, uh, she's asking Shelley, is First Citizen Bank considered a small lender? They uh, should they be, said yeah. that yeah. They're a community bank, so they should be, yes. Yeah, because her question continues saying they said that they are still trying to figure out the process. So if they've, they have they were involved with us, I know, on, the, on PP1 and 2. So they, I think they understand it right now, but um, okay. I think that's your answer, uh, Jeanette. 
There is one I, I noticed where it says loans will not actually be forgiven at 100% if a business also received an idle advance. Very misleading. So let me let me um, clarify that. You, it's not automatic forgiven. You still have to fill out the form. So, so the automatic forgiveness is not available, never has been available. In the past, if you had an idle advance, we were subtracting the idle advance from the PPP forgiveness and submitting the difference to the lender, leaving you with a balance. That has been changed. So if you did receive an idle advance and we did pay the forgiven amount, we will now go back and pay the difference of that idle advance back to the lender. So um, I just want to be very clear on this because those are two different things. So when it says very misleading, I just want to make sure that that's um, clarified on that. There's no automatic forgiveness and the idle advance um, is, it, is no longer into play when it comes to the PPP forgiveness. And we're going back and rectifying all of those loans now. And I do want to mention this, our, our federal legislators in New Mexico did play a really significant role in this act in regards to carrying some of these concerns, like that one, for example, getting that information. So when they were drafting this uh, this act, the, the bill that those things were, were those were discussed, and even the Save Our Stages uh, Act, that, that a lot of that, you know, uh, New Mexico, our federal legislators did a pretty good job of representing us, because I, I heard directly that they were really involved in getting that, that these concerns of small businesses they heard from New Mexico communicated. As well as the independent bankers, they were really good with it as well. Wonderful. Okay, well, I'm gonna go ahead and, and wrap it up. I see we're getting close to one o'clock. So I wanna throw it back to SBA. Do you guys have anything you wanna close with? or add no I, I would just add and, and Shelly will add something I'm sure too is that uh, just again uh, we ask for everyone's patience on this uh, this is a new funding that will continue till the 31st of March um, it's it's a another layer uh, that I think is effective uh, will be effective for some of those that didn't get a chance to get funding on the first or second cycle um, I think what I'm excited about is this and we'll learn more about it, is this uh, shredded venue operators program that allows for uh, those in that type of arena uh, to qualify like uh, the theatrical producers um, live performing arts organizations um, museum operator types motion picture theater operators talent representatives um, all that's in there and uh, the ink is still wet on it and they're, they're fine-tuning it but i think it's going to be a real game changer for new mexico so i think that's going to be exciting uh, if you again, if you have any questions, uh, get hold of the SBDCs. Uh, there's one in every institution of higher learning in the state of New Mexico, and or call our office, 248-8225, uh, uh, or go to our website, um, sba.gov, uh, New Mexico. You'll see that there. Uh, so call us, and Shelly, myself, or Ivan, I'll be glad to help you and guide you the questions. And if we can't have the answer, uh, we definitely know where to go to find you the answer. So, um, Godspeed and make sure everyone gets their vaccine. So, wait, before, hey, thank you, um, Joanna. Before we do that, sure. I, found, I found the answer to the question on the principles. So, if you don't mind, if I can read this, go for it. Thanks. Okay, so they're considered owners of the applicant as well as principals. If they're a sole proprietorship, it's the sole proprietor. For partnerships, all general partners and all limited partners owning 20% or more. Uh, for corporations, all owners of 20% or more. For limited liability uh, companies, all members owning 20% or more, and then any trust or. So it's, it's broken down on the, um, the information. So the application has application form. It also has instructions. So it's on that page on the instructions. That's great info. Thank you, Shelley. It's really helpful. Russell, with the SBDC, do you have anything to close with? Well, I'll just close everyone uh, uh, with this message. No one wants to hear this, but uh, now is the time to start beginning to shift your thinking and uh, operating out of fear, thinking. There's still a lot of people who are, are sitting there thinking, 
if I could just get through this COVID-19 thing, everything is going to get better. And I, we've been here almost a year now, almost a year now. And I'm just telling you, no one knows. We may be here another year. We may be here another 24 months. No one can control the future nor predict it. And so what I'm trying to get the message out to my small business is, now is this time to start reimagining small business. Where do you need to go? How do you need to prepare for the future? Because if you're sitting there thinking, I just get through COVID-19 and everything will go right back to normal and I could run my retail store without having a website, you're gonna be in for a sad reality. People are buying differently now. Uh, customer hab consumer habits have been broken. People, the world will not go back, the marketplace will not go back to the way it was before. The future of small business is being able to change and adapt rapidly, to be able to redevelop your business within any 90 day period if that's what it takes to survive and grow. So just wanna leave you with that. Now is the time to really start taking that fear head off and that put on, hey, um, I'm gonna get excited about my business, I'm gonna look at the future, and I'm gonna reimagine. Maybe I need to change industries. Maybe I need to get out of the industry I'm in because it's a dying industry. Maybe it's time for me to look at another industry. So tough conversations, but it's time to start, start having them. Thank you. Thank you, Russell. Hey, I love that. I, I, that resonates with me. I started a business right as the recession was hitting. So learned a lot of lessons and made a lot of changes, but ended up coming out okay because of, of that same advice that you're giving out right now. So, all right. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, John, Shelly. Thank you to Russell and your team. As always, you are fantastic partners and such a wealth of information and support for us and for the small business community. Thank you for Dan Schlegel from the governor's office for his continued support and, and information during this time. And thank you to all of you. Please hang in there, please reach out, and hopefully you can leave this information session and know where to go for more information and support. So please reach out. All right, thank you, take care, and hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.